Today, we're going to take a look at the Mega MFT X1 multifunction tester. With X in the title and a jet black look about it, it's very much on trend. And that reminds me of the day of the product was being launched, how pleased the team at Mega were to send out that tweet. I grabbed it out of the box. There's loads of great features, and we're going to cover as many as we can in this video. But it's very intuitive. I just picked it up and off I went testing, which was rather handy because in this workshop, we've had an additional socket installed, which means I need to complete a minor work certificate. In order to do that, I've been using the piece of cardboard that I've got my results on, either the sort of person that uses cardboard, or do you populate the certificate straight away? And before he says it, or I can use the search suite set of electronic certificates you've got in your hand, Rick. That's true, but it's also got a handy little trick up its sleeve. So why don't you go put the kettle on and get some biscuits? Della. So then, guys, the Mega X1 has Bluetooth inside it, which will enable it to connect to your phone or tablet. OK, before we enter that technical stuff, we're really interested in what is today's biscuit. And we've got the milk chocolate digestive. Now, I can't say that I haven't been keeping an eye on you because out the corner of that eye, I've no tissue recording results. But on paperwork, that doesn't look like the stuff that I'm used to seeing in, say, Guidance Notes 3 and therefore the stuff that I send yes. to the client. Yeah. So you, what you've got there is it's actually a form that you're filling in. So any information that you're picking up with the tester right. is then being transferred onto that form. That form can be replicated onto the certificate which you're familiar with. OK, and then can I email that out maybe to the client? Yes. Yeah, so if you went down to the preview report section of that, you can output the, well, output a PDF of that document. OK. So let's imagine I'm not a QS in the business, yep. OK, and I'm on a large site. Is there any way that the QS can get involved electronically with the certificate I'm building? Yeah, so as part of the search suite, you can actually have multiple users. So let's say you have a, a field or a lot of operatives that are working for you. They can all be out there gathering information and pumping it all into the search suite. And you can have the QS that's sat at home, sipping his tea and having some biscuits. He can then sign that off. That sounds like a bit of me that does. However, as I look at that tester, I don't think you're going to be able to use it, Rick. Do you want to take a closer look while I get the biscuits? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to need a battery. Right, would you like a biscuit? Ah, go on then. Hopefully that was a surprise for you, Rick. We've got a rechargeable battery here and there is nothing more satisfying than when this goes into the X1 tester. We've got our locating pins here and as I drop it in, there it is connected. And to release it, both sliders and it pops up. Take it back out and obviously we can recharge it from this point here. I'm going to show you a couple of tests and some of the great features within those tests by performing the earth fault loop impedance and the RCD test. Well, before we get started though, if we just want to rotate that wheel around to the cog, that should take us into the settings menu. Okay. And once you're in there, if you want to just slide that down. Yeah. Until we get to the network connection, if you want to switch that to on. Okay. And you'll see at the bottom there, the Bluetooth symbol flashing. Now we've got the Bluetooth function working on the Mega X1. If we move across onto the iPad and select the Mega Search Suite, which is also available on Android, let that log in. I've already created an account, so we should be good to go. I've created a couple of jobs. You might even hear a loud buzzing sound. That's just to let you know that the device has connected with the app. But if not, well, there we go. But if not, if we move across onto test instruments, click current, if we have a look at the top here, you'll see where it says MFT. If I click that, it's connected and away we go. We also know by looking at the actual X1 and the symbol we saw earlier that was flashing, the Bluetooth symbol is not flashing now because the two are connected. So we're into the world of the technology bit. And this is definitely a bit of you, Rick. However, yeah, under your tutelage, I've, uh, I've got a little bit of this going on myself here. So first of all, using Search Suite, can you show me where all the certificates are that I would need to populate as electrician? And we'll work back yep. from there. So we'll just go on to the current jobs tab here. You can see there, these are the current jobs that we've got currently active. OK, what a brand new fresh one. So that's what we're doing. We're doing a, a minor work certificate in here. So let's go for a fresh one. Is that the plus in the corner? Yep, if we press the plus, okay. and then we can see there you've got to select one of the job categories. So we go UK electrical certification, and there we go. We're, we're comfortable with seeing those. They're something we're very happy with. And if I wanted to do, therefore, go straight into a minor works, and I start populating it manually by typing in all the information. Yes. However, let's imagine that this uh, workshop was wired, say, 11 months ago. Yep. A full electrical installation certificate was issued and gone through the search suite. We'd have all the information already in here, and you've told me that I can actually use that to create the minor works we're going to do today. You can, yes. Yeah. So if I just back out of that, 
So we can see here we've got Rick's workshop, the EIC. <laughs> so we've got the certificate already populated. Maybe not 11 months ago, but no, we've been populated. It's, it's almost populated. Remember, there are so many fantastic features. We won't be able to demonstrate them all. So no. we've sort of had a go at that certificate, haven't we? We have, yes. Because we know we can use it to create a minor works. Could do one from fresh, but we're going to use that to create a minor works. We can, yes. Yeah. So okay. if we just we slide across here, and then if we click on this Actions tab there, yep. we'll click Copy, and we can see there we can instantly create a minor work certificate from that. A lot of choices there for us. So I can do an individual minor work certificate, or yep. I could have what it says there, multiple. So imagine I came to this workshop and it wasn't just the additional socket we were having here. Maybe we put one of these bulkheads in. Mm -hmm. I could create two at the same time. Yeah, you can do as many as you want. Okay, so that's really simple, isn't it, Rick? <laughs> it is. Let's just stick with simplicity and go with the one certificate for yeah. me. So if we just click on this top one here. Yeah. Oh, sorry again, there we go. And then if before we click All right, create, give it a new name. Give it a new name. We don't want it to be copy. No, okay. So, with, with so Rick's workshop, we're having this additional socket put in. We're creating a minor works and we're going to draw on all the information we've done before. This is fantastic, isn't it? You go back regularly to electrical installations using this software is you're going to build up a catalogue of information that can be drawn on. So we're going to create this. So here we go. So now we've got to know the circuits on. Okay, so it's on the third circuit. So here we go down here. So it's actually, we think it's 3L2. Do you agree? Yes, it is. Okay, and when we click on that, it's going to draw all the information off the certificate that we did when we initially installed the wiring, yes, cable exactly. sizes, circuit breaker, etc. Save us a load of time. That's it, yeah. Okay, so let's so, do that. So if we want to select that one, okay. try again. Here we go. So in we come. So we've got a new certificate there. So we? there we go. Rick's yeah. Workshop Muse Socket. Okay, it's, it's actually new socket, but we'll work on spelling in a different part of the video. Right, okay, so we click on it now. Well, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's the electrical. Go on. Let's run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So this is great, isn't it? So we're self-populated the certificate. And you said to me, and I like this, it works as a ladder, doesn't it? So the left-hand side, every time I hit next, yes. we move down to another one of the uh, the yeah. rows, don't we? So, okay, we could add more information at this stage. We're not going to. And Wow, brilliant. So we've already got it in there. Let's say this was somebody new. Once you've wrote in the new details, is yep. there any way of saving them? Yes, yeah, so if you just scroll down to the bottom here, you've got save contacts. So that will automatically add them straight into your contacts list. But as we are already pulling it from a previous certificate, it's pulled in the information. Let's say it wasn't on there. We can go into our contacts and then populate this information automatically. And if their phone number changed, I just click on there. Once I click on the phone number, I just go away and keyboard and type. Exactly. Really easy, isn't it? So let's go down again. Let's move through some of these a little bit briskly now. So we've got the, the details of the installation. And we've got the inspector. This is when you get your own back, is it, for the spelling moment we just had? So uh, I've noticed the inspector's Richard Gaunt. Yeah, well, I've got you added in here, so let's tap this other. And oh. there's somebody else that can also do some inspection. I'm your other. I like it. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've got Richard and the other one's Gary. Okay, so that's brilliant. So we could choose me. We're not going to, so that's all right. I'm happy with that. So as we come out of that, again, once we've added more details in here, it would self-populate. Do you agree? That's true. Okay, so we haven't done that. So remember, that first certificate was a little bit thin on information. So let's go through again. Comments on the installation, all things that we're used to now. So now we have the supply characteristics drawn in from the certificate. So from previous, we knew it was a TNCS exactly, earthing arrangement. Yeah. Let's, bro, let's pull that straight in. If, however, we thought somebody had made a mistake or maybe the earthing arrangement was changed to TT. We could have done that. Yeah, so we can just click on we click on TT and we can take out, obviously, the TNCS. And then we've changed that for that. That's, yep. that's so easy. Let's go back because it is a TNCS. So we like that one. And we've got all the other information we could now just fill in. We go next again. And look, here we go. So this has all been drawn in. I haven't put any of this information in. Exactly, yeah. So it's telling you there that it's from the workshop DB. It's three phase. Uh, and if we go a bit further down, we can see there what it was wired in, the CPC sizes. Oh, well done. Yeah, and, and the fuse awesome. and all the rest of it. 20 amp breaker, it's, a, it's an A3 radial effectively in here using the principles of an yeah. A3 radial. We did that when we did it. We didn't know the videos as well. As electricians, we quite like carrying out the test. We like walking around with the test and we certainly like walking around with the X1 because it looks so snazzy. But filling the paperwork in, that's where the old piece of cardboard comes in, a little bit of paper. Yep. This is saving us no end of time in the cert suite. Well, this is it. So if we just move a bit further down, and if we wanted to carry out any of the tests that you can see here, yep. uh, once we pre perform the tests on the, the Mega X1, yep. you tell it to save, it automatically transfers that information onto the app and pre-populates all data, which prevents fat fingers. Okay, so one question for you. So I've got the, say, the 1741. Yes. Okay, and I'm using cert suite. All the differences, everything else we've just done, would happily work away, wouldn't it? Populate it, would. it in. 
We what? just manually put our test results exactly in. Exactly that, exactly. Which is not a difficult task when nope. all the hard work's been done. No. Nope. Saves the old piece of cardboard. It does. So what we're going to do now is we're going to carry out on the, we know it's meant to be the, the highest value on the radial circuit somewhere over there. We're actually just going to, for the, this part of the show, an earth fault loop impedance on that socket there to see how the information transfers into the paperwork. But there's also some great features, Rick, within that impedance test. So let's move from settings round to our impedance. And what I like about the mega suite of testers is that they use the same color palette and the same symbols across their MFT ranges. And then we can look at this top section here to choose how we want to carry out the test. So we're doing our impedance test. We have an RCD in circuit. So we've got an RCD. We could have the RCD for an EV. So we've got the ability to change that. We've got the help screen here. So when I press this, it'll give us a little idea of what we need to do in order to carry out the test. So we come back at that one. And then we've got the ability, and we're going to do the three wire test on this socket because we've got the neutral as well present. But if you were carrying out an earth fault loop impedance test at a switch where you only had the line and protective conductor, you can do the two wire test. Each of these actions can be moved using this here. So we can scroll around. But you notice this time we're jumping across from two wire and we're jumping across to three wire. So we're moving and missing out the center one there, which is two wire high resolution. In order to get that test to be carried out, you need to come back for RCD and not have an RCD in circuit. So Rick, this could be your distribution board in a commercial property backs onto the supply transformer. So you're doing your external earth fault loop impedance and you've got next to no cable in circuit. So that loop test that you're gonna carry out externally is gonna be very, very low. And if you do this on the test that we can now select, we can either select it there by moving it around or we can select it by changing it here. If we do it on the two wire high resolution test, the actual machine now can read as low as 0 0.001 of an ohm. That is an incredibly low reading and is not present on any of the MFT testers from Mega. And it also can go up to 50 kA. So you think of that short circuit protection. So that's the current rating it can measure up to as well. So that's within that section there. We don't need that one. So we can come back. We've got an RCD in our circuit and we're going to carry out the three wire test. And as always, we're now ready to go. We just insert our leads, which are also color coordinated on our plug. So we can take our blue, our green and our red one. And we're ready to carry out that test and then we'll see if it does pass the results onto the iPad. Right, Gary, if you want to get that plugged in and we can start doing some testing. OK, so in we go and we're on and then we press the test. And we're off and running. You see now it's a live test and you'll see the confidence meter Rick at the top moving to get that accurate result for the impedance. As it comes in, those lines will come in and it'll appear as our line and protective earth reading. And we've got 0 0.32 ohms as I really be interested to see if that result then appears onto the iPad. Right. Well, first of all, you're going to have to press the, the save icon at the top. Yep, that's okay. it. And then just select the ZS, which it already is. So I could have selected it as a ZDB or a ZE, so we're on the right one, so Z we're happy with that. So we want ZS and then press the tick at the top. So press it just there. And then it's sending it across, and there we go. The information has been sent across. Let's click OK, and if we have a look there, the maximum measured is 0 0.32, which is the same as what we have on the unit here. Okay, now the problem is, Rick, I've made a little bit of a mistake. I'm actually plugged into the wrong socket outlet. Yep. So I'm going to now move it across to the one I should have gone in. So it's a little bit further away now. So I'm expecting this reading to change. Yep. Is it going to be smart enough to know that I've uh, done another test again? Well, let's run the test and see. So just print it, simply press start. OK, we're off and running again. Confidence meter kicks in and we'll see what reading we get now. We expect it to be a little bit higher. We're further down the radial circuit now. And that reading comes in at 0 0.34 of an ohm. So trump in the 0 0.32 that we had before. So if we just do the same again, click that save icon, ZS, yes. and then the tick button again. So just here, yeah. It's going to send it across. And there we go. It's going to say you've got a previous result. Do we want to acknowledge it? Yes. And there we go. It's just switched over to 0 0.34. Right then, guys, what's the next test? I've set it to the RCD test and it's come up with this screen here on the auto function. So it will do half, one, two, five ramp test and then zero and 180 degrees. I think the two times for the RCD test is a continental thing. I'd love your comments below to put me right on what it actually is. But I'm going to change this grid. I don't want my auto test to do this when we know what the minimum requirement is for testing an RCD. So I'm going to come out of this and I'm going to go into my settings section and find the RCD within here. So if we look up here, we've got on general at the minute, I'll scroll across. I'll go to RCD and I can come down this row 
until right at the bottom here, we've got our auto sequencing. So if I tick that one, and there's my grid, and they're all enabled at the minute. So I can scroll through using the arrows at the top, or this rotator here. So I'm gonna come through and pick them. I'm gonna, I'll keep the ramp in. I'm gonna take out five. So I'm gonna press this one here, disabled. I'm definitely gonna take out the two because until people comment, I don't know what it's there for. I'm gonna leave the one and a half times testing. So I'm gonna do half, one, and ramp as my test for the RCD. So I'm happy with that one. So I'll tick that, and there we go. So let's come back now to where our RCD test is. Okay, we'll come on to RCD, and we'll see the auto test is now completely different. It might be that you've got to test your RCD. You might be an A type one, or you might be doing a B. As we go through, we've got the EV, and then we've got the AC. So you might want to do it as if it's an AC RCD. You might want to do it as one times and only in one of the degrees for the test itself. I'm going to play Devilment here. I'm going to do it as an AC. I'm obviously going to do it as if it's the 30 milliamps it is on an auto. I'll do half, one, and the ramp test as my auto test. So I'm happy and I'm ready and set up to go. Right then, guys, if you want to make your way across to the board, I will switch this page because we need to be on the RCD page here. And I will press the test button and let that perform its test. So I'll quickly cycle through. So we'll go through, we'll do the half, the one, and the ramp. So at some point, I'm going to have to reset this for you, Rick. Yep. So as we go through, we don't expect nothing to happen at half, which is uh, um, nothing's happened in either end of the cycle. There uh, we go. So we've tripped. I'm going to reset that for you. Yep. Okay, so that is reset, and we should therefore, oh, we're gone again. And now it's going to do that ramp test for us as well, which I think is a valid test, especially for nuisance stripping in the future. So you can test it, see what it goes out at, and that's us done that test. So with that completed, we've got to get those results now onto your iPad. There we go. So the last one has just performed there. If you want to just turn that back on for us. Yep. Right. So now we're going to get that transferred. And as we did before, if you want to press that save button. I do like go. this bit. And there we go. We just need to tell it it's on L1. Okay. Which is L1. So we're happy with that. So yep. we'll transfer the results. And there we go. Okay. And Send in the info. And there we go. On screen again. It's giving us the, the results that we have. Let's press the OK button. And there we go. It's populated the uh, the operating times for us okay and it's chosen the maximum of the two so we had 27 and 17.4 so it's even done that for you so classic i truly am an analog man trapped in a digital world but thanks to the mega mft x1 tester the search suite software and the incredible tutorage of you rick you. even i got there you're welcome and if you're wondering what's inside of the bag to do the x1 tester check out the short video on screen just there